the world has changed because what Trump has done. And the American people, including independents and some Republicans, know how bad he is, know how much he's misrepresented, know how he's getting close to getting us in a war. I said, as the walls close in on this man, I'm worried he's going to get us to war in Iran. Unfortunately, I may have been right. The fact of the matter is, there's a lot at stake in this election. A few years later. President Biden is promising a response after three U.S. troops were killed in a drone strike in Jordan. 38 others were injured in the attack carried out by Iran-backed militants, and the number is expected to rise. Donald Trump is the greatest threat the world faces. The only loser I see is Donald Trump. But we've been right about it, almost everything. Do you ever see the hat? Trump is right about everything. I hope I'm not right about World War III because you're very close to World War III. We do have a lot of news to get to this morning, starting with that chaos following the horrific attack outside the Kabul airport. This is now the deadliest attack on U.S. forces in Afghanistan in more than a decade. Turn to the other news this Sunday night and to the somber homecoming for the 13 brave Americans killed in Thursday's attack at the Kabul airport. 11 Marines, one Army soldier, and a Navy corpsman, most of them in their early 20s. Shocking images coming in right now from Afghanistan. The Taliban parading through the streets in U.S. armored vehicles and flying a Black Hawk helicopter. It shows a parade of U.S. armored vehicles just outside of Kandahar Wednesday. And right on top of there, that is the black and white flag of the Taliban. And take a look at this. A flying overhead was a Black Hawk helicopter. Now, it's not clear how much U.S. hardware is now in the hands of the Taliban but certainly gaining control in the skies with this kind of equipment is a major boost for them. We can join forces, stop the shouting and lower the temperature. A stunning reversal by the U.S. military. Late Friday, acknowledging this drone strike intended to target a potential ISIS bomber actually killed 10 innocent Afghan civilians, including seven children, some just two and three years old. I'm here today to set the record straight and acknowledge our mistakes. Major news. After days on a razor's edge, Ukraine is now a nation at war. Just hours ago, Russian forces began their attack. President Vladimir Putin warning other countries that any attempt to interfere with the Russian action will lead to, quote, consequences they have never seen. Won't that be fun? We begin tonight with the Middle East in flames. Israel has formally declared war after that unprecedented multi-pronged terror attack from Hamas, shocking the nation, catching its intelligence service by surprise. The death toll is mounting and at least 100 taken hostage. Several Americans are now confirmed to be among the dead. In the wake of the attacks in Israel, border officials say they've seen a growing number of people on the FBI terrorist watch list trying to enter the country through the southern border. The number of known or suspected terrorists or any Anyone connected to one entering the country illegally through the southern border is at an all-time high. But look at what I've inherited and what I've done. China's military says that it is ready to fight after completing three days of large-scale combat exercise around Taiwan. The exercises follow the Taiwanese president's trip to the U.S. last week. And now in an exclusive interview, Taiwan's foreign minister tells CNN's chief national security correspondent Jim Shooter that China is, quote, trying to get ready to launch a war against Taiwan. Jim is with us now. Uh, boy, those are sobering words, to put it mildly. You may remember that Chinese surveillance balloon that crossed the U.S. earlier this year. Remember that? Before it was shot down by the U.S. military after its seven-day journey. Well, here's an update on the investigation. U.S. intelligence found that the balloon used an American internet service provider to send data related to its location back to China. That's Bidenomics. Out of that big story, a dangerous confrontation between the United States and Russia, an incident that National Security Council spokesman John Kirby called unsafe, unprofessional, and reckless. The Pentagon spokesman saying today that a Russian fighter jet struck the propeller of a U.S. surveillance drone in international airspace, forcing it to crash into the Black Sea. Watch me. Latch on to President Biden and Democrats' successful policies and take credit for things they didn't do while tying themselves into pretzels to do nothing for the American people for the sake of Donald Trump. Case in point, fixing what they say is a crisis at the border. With congressional negotiators continuing work on a bipartisan deal to tie border policy changes to funding for Ukraine. Over the weekend, President Biden said he's ready to take action if Congress is serious about solving the border issue. If that bill were the law today, I'd shut down the border right now and fix it quickly. And Congress needs to get it done. Starting another fucking war. <laughs> remember, I, I, remember how Trump 
was deemed an agent of chaos. Four years of turmoil to be replaced by the calm, cool waters of Joe Biden. Mm. What a pyramid of feces we were sold by the media. We're now experiencing basically a nonstop tornado of incompetence and confusion from Kabul to supply chains to the Middle East to Ukraine. How much more can we take? I mean, I agree. Trump's words, you know, they made people uncomfortable. They made them nuts. But the world was kind of peaceful. And maybe there's something to be said for that, that there is peace through unpredictability and saying yeah. We don't seek war, as Jesse says, that's an obvious statement. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to say that. You don't have to say that. I don't know what Trump would say, but he would, say, he would not say we don't seek war. He'd say, let's see what happens, you know? <laughs> uh, we don't want to get into war, but, you know, we're happy to oblige if they wish. The way he dealt with uh, North Korea, I think what happens is we get stuck in the prison of two ideas, bomb them or do nothing. When, in fact, you step back, you get out of the prison, and you eliminate the predictable voices, the people that say, bomb immediately, right? And the people that say, no, don't yeah. bomb. There's so much there. And it's like either going after the proxies, right? Or taking, somehow, psychologically, taking North Korea off the list of existential risks that no one ever considered, right? There is a path forward. You need to assess who the players are, the timing of these events, how this happened. What are you going to do up until November when the issue could solve itself with a new president? See, these are smaller, these are bigger ideas, right, which lead to smaller, manageable problems. Right now, the small prison ideas of bombing or not bombing will lead to what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Frankly, I believe if I were president today, the country would be safer and we've seen a lot less violence, and here's why. The greatest threat to the stability of the world right now remains a twice impeached, multiply indicted former president of this nation. Donald Trump is the greatest threat the world faces.